After breakfast, Filet went to change out of her PJs and into some more appropriate clothes for house hunting. She was excited yet nervous to spend the day with her father, for whom she hadn't had contact with for about a year. But she knew with her due date approaching, now was the time to make amends, and while she always said she would never reconcile with her dad, her mind had changed. To be home and have her father in her life and the lives of his grandchildren would be a dream come true. She walks into the kitchen where she kisses her husband on the lips and gives her father a kiss on each cheek. She herself yawns and stretches, smooths her top over her bum and asks her father if he was ready to go. He nods and grabs the keys to the house they're going to see as they head out the door. Once out of the door, they both walk into the ocean, flip and flick their tails a few times before they start swimming to the far island of Muapalam. As they swam, her father started talking and asked, Filet, honey, why did you leave Sulani? Filet stopped swimming to rest and catch her breath and said, Dad, you know why I left. Your antiquated views on female merfolk came on full force after Mom died. Because of this, you wouldn't let me pursue education. I was going to come back and to be the princess and the future ruler you've always wanted. But I wanted to have a better head on my shoulders. I, before I did that, I... I wanted to go to university to become the best version of myself, to test myself, and to stand on my own two fins. Filet sighed heavily. Her breath stuttered as tears rolled up in her eyes. She continued, It's what Mom did before she met you. You were so much more open-minded before she passed on. What happened? You gave me no choice but to leave silently in the night. You had essentially imprisoned me in the palace. His Majesty nods as he gets teary himself. I know. I'm sorry. At the time, I couldn't see how my trying to protect you went awry and instead caused our relationship as father and daughter so much damage and you from achieving your dreams and becoming the best future queen you could possibly become. This will always be the biggest regret of my life. Marlon hugs his daughter, takes her hand and places it on her belly and his hand atop hers as he watches and feels the baby move inside, then Marlin continues. And now, within you, you carry the future of this kingdom. I am so proud of you. You stood up to me, and on to your own two feet, educated yourself and did precisely what you set out to do. Get a good head on your shoulders. His voice catches as he pulls her in close, and he whispers into her ear, Your mother would be so, so proud of you. So incredibly proud. He kisses her on her cheek, pulls her away to look into her eyes as he continues. When I leave this world for the great ocean sky, you will rule this kingdom with such grace and wisdom. You will do it better than I ever could. You will be a great queen, my darling. The greatest queen, the greatest monarch we've ever had. Your home, where you finally belong. Finally! All's right with the world now. His Majesty wipes his eyes with the final sniffle and says, Okay, enough of the sap. Let's go see this house. And off he went. Flay nods as she sniffs back her own tears as she flicks off to follow him. They walk up to the shore toward the house. Flay just gazes at the facade in wonder. Wow, this place is huge. I don't think we can afford it. This is its just so much. Flay says solemnly as they walk through the gates and into the courtyard. The king shakes his head no with a smile and says, My darling girl, if you like this house, I'll get it for you. A gift for you and Kenjo, my grandbaby. Do not worry about the cost. If you don't like this one, we'll find something else or we'll build it. And until then, you and Kenjo can stay with me at the palace. 
Comrade Kenja has said your place is much too small for you now. The baby will be here soon. Where will they sleep? Where will they play? And until you have decided on a home to move to, please, move in with me. If you have the baby before you move into the new place here, there's more than enough room for everyone and there's plenty of help should you need a hand with the baby. Filet stops walking, looks at Marlin. You can't be serious. It's expensive here. I can't let you do that. We can manage. Marlin interrupts. Love. No. I've seen pictures. While beautiful, your home is much too small. You can't all squeeze in there now, let alone with a small child. No. Move in here. Into the palace. While we settle on a place. Or get it ready for your move. Whatever you want. And yes, you most certainly can let me gift you a home. You deserve it for all that you've been through without me and my support. I want to do this for you. No is not an option. Now, let's finish the walkthrough and you can tell me what you think. Marlin offers Filet his arms as they continue to tour the house. Filet sighs and takes his arm. Okay, okay. He's right, you know, though. It's too small. Stunning! Beautiful home, but we're gonna need more room. And soon. She gently strokes her belly and says, This little swimmer will be here before we know it. I don't think we can ready a home on our own in time. You're right. We need your help, Dad. Even if I haven't wanted to admit it, and I miss Mom. She's not here for this. I need her. Marlin stops, turns Flay toward him, and places his hand on the hand Flay has on her belly. He hugs her and kisses her forehead. I miss her too. I am not Mum, but you have me. And my help. Whatever you need. You and Kenjo do not need to do any of this on your own. You're home now, my daughter. Home with me. Your mother's spirit will bring you the blessings of the ancestors. I just know it. Marlin once again takes Filet's elbow to guide her through the tour. When Marlin and Filet return to the palace, Kenjo is ready in the living room, watching TV. Filet waddles to the sofa and sits beside him. Filet snuggles into him and yawns. The house is pretty amazing. Oh, I think it's perfect. Did you like it? Kenjo wraps his arms around her, pulling her closer, kissing the top of her head, and replies, Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Did you see the yard in that pool? Oh my god. It's my dream house. I think we need to tell your dad that we like the house, and we'd like to have it. Blay nods and says, Yeah, I agree. We need to tell him. Dad also asked if we'd like to come live at the palace while we wait for the house to be ready. I think it's a good idea. We can be here, and at least dad will be here. We have so much help right here if we need it. I miss home. I miss my mom. She's gonna miss this. The birth of her grandchild. I wanna come home. I need to be home. It's, it's time, my love. Kenjo holds her tighter. He kisses her head again before he says to her softly, Okay, honey. We'll come home. You're right. It's time. We can't hold this off any longer. We need to make this happen for this little one. Let's go talk to your dad. Kenjo gets up to find Marlin. Marlin was looking at Sammy. Poor Sammy. He wasn't looking too hot. His fur was blue, he had chills, was feverish, and had a bright red nose. Oh, Sammy! exclaimed Kenjo. We've got to get you to a vet. He rushes into the living room to tell Filet about Sammy. Oh no. Is he going to be alright? Let me get my jacket. Filet said anxiously. In reply, Kenjo said, Oh, honey, no. Stay home and rest. You've been on your feet a lot today. I'll take him. I won't be but a couple of hours. He'll be asleep by the time I get back. I'll see you in bed. Don't worry about our furry son. I'll take care of him. Sammy and Kenjo rushed to the vet's office. The only one that was open this late was in Brindleton Bay, but they made it in about an hour and a half. It was busy for a Sunday night. Nonetheless, Kenjo checked in and waited for the vet assistant to call them in. After about 45 minutes, they were called. Sammy was examined and told he had a bit of a cold. Sammy was given an injection and started to feel better almost immediately. 
On the drive home, Sammy and Kenjo had an adorable discussion about the move and Sammy having a baby sibling soon. Kenjo doesn't know how much Sammy understood, but I'm sure it was an adorable chat. Kenjo was just beat by the time they made it back to Solani, back to the palace. They let Sammy out of his crate and both him and Kenjo climbed immediately into bed to dream of kibble and kiddos. The next morning, Kenjo crept out of bed carefully as to not wake Filet. The baby kept her up all night by kicking her in the ribs and doing an entire synchronized swimming exercise in her belly. Everyone finally settled down and he wanted to make sure she slept. Kenjo tucked her in, kissed her on the forehead, and walked softly to the door, left the room, and gently closed the door behind him, to be met immediately by Sammy, giving his dad a hearty hello. Kenzo shushed Sammy, picked him up, and explained that Mommy was still sleeping, while he carried the precious little cat into the kitchen for his breakfast. Sammy seemed to understand, and was quiet. That was until they entered the kitchen. And when I say that Sammy loves his grandpa, that would be an understatement. Sammy meows a very loud and happy greeting. Marlon picks him up and gives him a nice morning hug and scratch before filling his bowl. Hey, Marlon. Um, Filet and I talked about it last night before I had to take Sammy to the vet, Kenjo said. Oh yes, what did you decide? And hey, what's Filet this morning anyway? Marlon asked. Baby kept her up. She finally got to sleep, so I snuck out carefully and closed the door. Oh, and we decided to take you up on your offers of the house you've seen in Muapalam, and of staying here until it's ready. The baby will be here very likely before the house is done. And there's no way we can have the baby while we're still living in the little cottage. There's just no room. I know it means a lot to her, but there's just no room. And I'd like to have a bit more help for her. She's working so hard to be the best professor she can, and she loves it, but with Kenja replied. Marlin nods and interrupts. I agree. She's a hard worker. The pregnancy has been very hard on her. I know. We talked about it yesterday. I'm glad you're both here now. Nothing more to worry about. I have Tommy, my butler. Call up movers and get your stuff packed up and moved over to the new house. And I'll call the realty office. Don't worry, I've got it covered. And I'll tell our maid to skip your room for right now. So Filet can sleep as long as she needs to. Great. Oh, hey, do you mind if I set up my archaeology table somewhere while I'm here? Kenjo asked. No, not at all. You can put it anywhere but the entrance and the throne room. I have to keep up appearances and all. You know how that goes, replied Marlin. Kenjo nods and smiles. Fantastic. I think I'll get started on some of those overdue projects today while my wife sleeps. Weeks go by and time goes on. All of the stuff from their old house has been moved into the new one and it was put on the market as a rental and was snatched up immediately. Flay and Marlin have continued to strengthen their relationship by regular father-daughter time. Throughout her pregnancy, Marlin has been the epitome of a doting father, making sure she has everything she could possibly need or want. He wants the baby almost as much as Kenjo and Flay. Flay has been letting her father take care of things with the houses and moving. In the meantime, she has been focusing on work as an art professor and as an artist herself. She's been making sure to get plenty of rest, keeping up with her appointments that Marlin insists on being at, and spending time with her husband, enjoying the downtime they get to have together before the baby comes. Summer turns to autumn, and autumn to winter. The baby has grown and so has Filet, who is now in the last few days of her pregnancy. With the baby due any day, they're more anxious than ever and are chomping at the bit to get moved in and settled. Will Filet and Kenjo make it to their new house before the baby comes, and how will little Sammy react to the new baby? Find out next time on the tale of the Young Fish family. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed the video and are loving the series so far, please like, comment, share, and subscribe so you won't miss a single upload. Be well, happy, and peaceful, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye, guys.